Welcome to this video. My name is Roland Warzecher and I have just returned from the recent Berlin Butler Bouts, an event devoted to fencing with sword and buckler, but also with other kinds of historical shields. Uh, I have to admit that I'm still a bit exhausted after hundreds of fights and uh, I brought with me a lot of footage which was recorded on site, which I intend to share with you in upcoming videos. Let me also add that if you find this material useful and you are thinking about joining a class or a workshop, you're most welcome to get in touch and hire me. I'm most willing to go places and uh, come to your club to teach. In fact, in previous years, I have traveled all over the globe teaching sword and shield in places from Anchorage to Oakland. So don't hesitate to get in touch if you feel like this is something you want to organize too. Also, my thanks go out to all those of you who already support my work via patreon.com. You can find the link in the video caption. And um, if you're not yet an active supporter, but you feel like you want to join the community of my patrons, of course, you're most welcome to do so and benefit from according rewards. Good. So much for this. I hope you will enjoy the video and I hope you're going to find it useful. Continue. Like a lot of you have now become pretty versed in feeling pressure through a blade bind. So you go into a fight in some fashion or other and then there's a bind and you know that uh, how to position your blade in order to uh, have the, to win the bind. Yeah, and then the other one does something similar, you change it too, and this is what you do a lot of the time. And this feels to me very often like some of you consider this as an end in itself. So it's like this dance, and we can do that forever. So. But then it's actually not fighting, it's an exercise, and it's... I feel that many of my opponents, when they have won the bind, they don't know what to do. So they wait for the other one to change through, so they can do something similar again, and go on, go on, and go on, and, uh, and on. And the main mistake, the main misconception here is that you consider responding to the superior pressure of your opponent um, by changing through, by putting your blade on top again, you consider that the end of your defense, in a sense. So in your mind, this is an action that is concluded at that point, and then you, then you think like, uh, what now? And then it's too late, okay? Um, in contrast, when I do it, it's not the conclusion of an action, but it is the start of an attack. Yeah, so I train my changing through and my winding actions as the beginning of a conclusion which is uh, a hit. And on the way, I may have to change my original plan a couple of times, but it's okay because I already work in such a fashion that I'm thinking towards the target. This is exactly what Cornelius was talking about earlier this morning when we were doing the warm-up game. And remember what Cornelius said. Cornelius, repeat. Okay, so we're always trying to go forward, but we do it carefully. So if we have so managed to be on top, for instance, and we manage to ex, sort of exclude him here, so he's locked out, then we slowly proceed. So we don't wait here, so again, this is not an end itself, but I'm slowly proceeding. Yes, and many, exactly, and many of you go into a blocking mode. So they do respond, but they do not consider that they should also advance. So they're blocking. So when he's changing through, and he's working like a snake towards the target, eventually he'll end up in the target. So one option is working like a snake, and the other is working like a windshield wiper. Now, of course, a windshield, a windshield wiper does not advance, while a snake does. 
Okay, so uh, here's an exercise that I find really valuable to train and practice exactly this approach that when you gain the advantage in a bind, you instantly use it. Without rushing, of course. You have to do it calmly because, as I said, I want to be able to change my plan if he responds to it. Then I uh, want to advance and be in a position where I can take a new exit from the road to the target. So if you picture the tempo, the action that you are doing, um, like a road, and you're going from the start of the tempo to your target, to your aim, which is conclusion by hitting the opponent. And on the way, a lot of things can happen. While this tempo evolves, there can be loads of, there can be loads of things that happen, like um, I'm getting here, I want to strike, and now something happens. That is an exit. So I'm taking a detour to the target now. And I can uh, respond and take this exit because I'm not rushing things. You don't charge in. If you charge in, you impale yourself on your opponent's blade and you do the job for him. So when you drive down this road up to, to the target, to your final destination, be aware of all the exits on the way. Because there may be um, a traffic jam ahead and then you just take a turn and drive around the traffic jam and then there's an exit and oh, okay, I don't want to bump into the cars in front of me so I have to take another detour and eventually I'll come uh, to my final destination and reach the target. Okay? And you cannot rush it because then phew, we will be stuck in a traffic jam or whatever. And to be able to respond in time to leave the road and take an exit to do a detour, there's um, this particular exercise, and that is actually training your blows. So you, all you do is you, let's take for example the Twerhaus that we do, for instance on the shield side, you can do it, yeah, okay, I'll do it in this uh, position. So, okay, so uh, let's first look at this Twerhau here. So you can train this blow, and um, train it, train it until you have a good idea how it actually works. But uh, in order to place it in the right order and use it in the moment you actually need it, the way that I often train it as a solo drill, I use a, what in German I would call Auftaktbewegung, an introductory motion that is attached to this blow. So it's uh, with this one, uh, imagine I'm playing a fiddle and then I'm going to the point where I train my blow. So I have a particular motion that is like an entry into the blow. And this motion is not meaningless, it's actually winning a bind. So this is how we trained it a couple of weeks ago. We went to our fighting stances and then um, we used a neutral binding position, in this case to the left of our sword. And now I play the fiddle. So. I go on top, now I have won the advantage in the bind and I uh, continue to take more advantages in the bind that is leveraged as I turn my sword and finally, boom, comes the conclusion which is the blow. All right, so we trained it in two parts, one is winning the bind and winding up to striking position, then strike. Yeah? So it would look something like this. And when you strike from here, then uh, you can see that I'm still on top. Yeah? Remember, we covered that, uh, earlier that you, don't, you should not strike too early because then you will give up the advantages in the bind. If I strike from here, it's easy for him to be on top. So when you train it, you do the full motion. You go over here, fiddle, wind, strike. So this is something you can do at home. And that means that if that becomes a fluid motion, you can respond in a fight when you are being uh, uh, when you're being overbound and you change through. Then your changing through is the start of your attack. So you connect the conclusion and the response to being overbound with this motion that is ingrained in your body by training. Okay, so this is uh, to. Uh, Bind, a bind to the left of the sword, you can do the same thing to the other side. So again, very gently, go over the blade, now you've won 
the bind. And remember, you're not pressing, okay? Never ever press. Some of you still do it. If the windshield wiper goes, his blade goes straight into your face. Just very gently position your blade. You don't have to press at all. You are in a superior position. And now, and I, see, I'm doing all this with a thumb trick. And uh, now I'm winding to here. Ooh, and this is uh, where, where I can strike from. Okay, once again. You see again, my hit is on top of his blade, so that there's nothing he can do against it. So if you, oh, if you can stand here, can you just? Okay, so once again, the exercises, the first exercise to the left of your sword, fiddle over his, uh, his blade, turn as you wind up, to the weakness, and then finally strike. And on the other side, same thing. Start with the points uh, about head height. And the conclusion can also be a thrust. For those of you who have, who have shorter, blow, uh, short, shorter blades, you can thrust from there. Same thing in this orientation. Fiddle outwards. Don't be afraid that your point is completely offline. There's nothing you can do against it. And if it, uh, at this point he should respond by going away, then without a, uh, without a shield you can easily respond to it. If you have a shield, you can without a shield you can, re can respond by pursuing him. Without a shield, with a shield, he will expose uh, a high target and get strike there. Okay, so once again, to the left. And to the right. All right, that's it. And both positions are actually in the book. The first one comes from Schützen. So this is where you're in a Schützen position to, con to conclude with this blow. And the other one, stand here, is in the play from Krucke, where we come from a position where both swords are binding below, and then uh, as uh, I am as I'm um, threatening his low openings, he moves away and strikes from above, and I go to this position here, and then from here uh, I can either uh, I can either strike the blow or I can press. So both these binds are in 133 too, and this is a good exercise. All right, train it and beat me next time. Thank you. <laughs>